Hello, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Aaron Cohen Gadol. I'm a neurosurgeon. I've been involved in surgical treatment of brain aneurysm for over 20 years. I know the diagnosis of a brain aneurysm is quite scary for our patients, and therefore I like to prepare this short video to discuss some of the details that uh, our patients need to know or if you're diagnosed with a brain aneurysm during your journey for treatment. So a brain aneurysm is a balloon-like bulge caused by weakening in the wall of an artery in the brain. Most people unfortunately do not know that they have an aneurysm until it ruptures and bleeds. And that's where obviously things can get life-threatening. Rarely a brain aneurysm can however get big enough to put pressure on the brain and without breathing diagnosed. But again, that's really very, very rare. What's the epidemiology of these aneurysms? About 6 million people in the U.S. have an unruptured aneurysm. So that's about 1 in 50 people. It's more common than one can think. 25,000 people, unfortunately, per year suffer from a subarachnoid hemorrhage. That means a bleeding from the aneurysm in the subarachnoid space, which is the space around the brain. And 40% um, of them, unfortunately, die at the time of the hemorrhage can be really life-threatening. However, four out of seven people who have the hemorrhage will recover, and are, but however, will have some disabilities. One good piece of information to know is that 85% of aneurysms are not diagnosed until they rupture. So it tells you that the best way to manage aneurysms is to prevent them, because when they're known, they unfortunately cause a lot of problems with their hemorrhage. It's good to know that Unfortunately, 500,000 deaths occur worldwide due to aneurysm hemorrhage per year. Aneurysms most often occur between the ages of 35 to 60 and extremely rarely in children. 5 to 10% 10, 10 of strokes are caused by subarachnoid hemorrhage. And unruptured aneurysms have about 0.5 to 1% risk of hemorrhage per year during the lifetime of every individual. So what are the risk factors for aneurysm formation? These are critical again, because we want to prevent aneurysm formation, because there's no easy way to diagnose them before they rupture. Smoking, high blood pressure, age, the gender. Women are uh, more prone to develop aneurysms than males, and the ratio is three to two. Family history of brain aneurysms can be critical and rarely infections, tumor, traumatic brain injury, or other inherited disorders can cause um, brain aneurysms. But again, the two most important factors that are modifiable are smoking, so please avoid smoking as much as possible, and high blood pressure, so please control your blood pressure as much as possible. So what are the symptoms related to an aneurysm bleed? Sudden and severe headache, the worst headache of life. That's the classic presentation of a brain aneurysm hemorrhaging. Nausea, vomiting, stiff neck, sensitivity to light, blurred or double vision, loss of consciousness, seizure, difficulty swallowing. Those are the main symptoms related to um, the aneurysm. What are the diagnostic studies? A CT scan typically demonstrates a presence of blood from an aneurysm hemorrhage. And secondarily, an angiogram. A CT angiogram can be much faster. However, a cerebral angiogram through a catheter through your groin or your forearm can really nicely demonstrate the aneurysm. In other words, the catheter goes up, injects some uh, contrast through the vessels of the brain, and then we take some extra, image, extra images to be able to visualize flow and the location of the aneurysm. What are the treatment options? The first option is observation. This is a modality if the patient is older, the aneurysm is smaller than seven millimeters. Again, seven millimeter is, a, is an important uh, number to know and uh, uh, delineates really the treatment modality. The other options are endovascular therapies, and that includes coiling, different uh, flow diversion modalities, and other intrasacular uh, therapies that can really effectively occlude the aneurysm very minimally invasive. The last option is surgical clipping. 
that uh, we all do at craniotomy. It's a more invasive procedure where a piece of bone in the skull is removed temporarily just during the surgery and a clip is placed across the neck of the aneurysm. Many factors are considered for choosing the best treatment, including patient preference, age, medical comorbidities, size, location, and obviously the appearance of the aneurysm. Let's talk more about endovascular therapy. A catheter is inserted into the artery in your groin or your forearm, and it goes all the way to the aneurysm and platinum coils or other uh, type of devices are placed around the aneurysm, and that prevents the blood from going into the aneurysm and rupturing the aneurysm. And sometimes the um, surgeon may use a stent or a balloon to help the to keep the coils in the aneurysm and divert the uh, flow away from the aneurysm. Surgical clipping, as I mentioned, is via craniotomy. A clip is placed across the nickel of the aneurysm, and uh, sometimes a bypass procedure may be needed in order to divert flow from the aneurysm vessel to another uh, important vessel within the brain to avoid stroke. But overall, the clipping is extremely durable and very effective but slightly more risky than endovascular therapies. In terms of the recovery, as you can see in this slide, day one to 14 is, um, uh, you have to be in the ICU because for a ruptured aneurysm, you have to be monitored for vasospasm. That's where the blood around the vessels of the brain can cause clamping down of the vessels and potentially a stroke. So the recovery from a ruptured aneurysm is significantly longer, one to 14 days to monitor for vasospasm. And then uh, a week after that, you can undergo further therapy to increase your activity, work with a physical therapist, and be able to transition to going home. However, for unruptured aneurysms, the stay is very short in the ICU, one to two nights, and then recovery on the floor is much shorter as well. The discharge planning for these patients can be quite important. For patients who have had a ruptured aneurysm, they may require rehabilitation after hospitalization and afterwards even requiring outpatient therapies and uh, even uh, in rare cases a long-term facility if the recovery has not been significant. Let's talk about the recovery because it is absolutely critical after a ruptured aneurysm to set the expectations accurately. You take it easy for three to four weeks. You'll find that you'll tire easily, your memory is having a lot of issues. That is expected. Just go slowly so you can avoid any setbacks. Avoid vigorous activity, running, aerobics, and weight training. Those can be too much if you have had a ruptured aneurysm. But it's okay to take short walks and increase the walks gradually. Avoid lifting anything over 10 to 20 pounds for the first month. Do not bend uh, over from the waist down as this can lead to headaches. And limit your visitors and stimulation because you really want to get your brain act, uh, sort of healed slowly and don't overwhelm it with uh, too much activity at the same time. These are all expected and normal. Uh, after ruptured aneurysm, headaches, drowsiness, depression, lack of sleep, trouble concentrating, and mental fatigue, these are all normal. Please realize it would take time for them to get better. What are the tips to deal with many of these? I think it's important to use sticky notes, pace yourself, um, repeat to help remember, get help from family members, get plenty of rest and um, sleep, avoid overstimulation and multitasking, and play card games or other simple memory tests, and be patient with yourself. And other tips are critical. Keep a list of the function and tasks you need to do because that can really help your memory. Eat healthy, rest whenever you can, and um, listen to other colleagues and family members that are trying to help you to deal with the problem. Gradually, again, gradually increase your activity. Avoid strenuous activity and challenging sports. Rehabilitation can be quite helpful. Walk outdoors slowly. Don't push yourself too hard. And again, cut back um, on the naps if you're having trouble sleeping. Um, because sometimes if you take too many naps, that can really screw up 
your uh, sleep patterns. Be patient, be patient, be patient. Remind yourself daily, recovery is a journey and not an immediate event. Involve your family and friends and co-workers. Set priorities. Talk with your doctors uh, if you're having any problems. Try to find something to smile and laugh about. And keep a journal of how you're progressing and be happy as you're conquering your, la your, uh, your goals. Get plenty of rest and also try to attend a local aneurysm support group. They can really be effective to connect you to other members who have suffered from cervical similar uh, challenges. So overall, important points to consider. Surgery or endovascular therapy can completely take care of the aneurysm in most cases. And in rare cases, the aneurysm may recur, but we can treat it again. Patients may be monitored for two to five years after the aneurysm is treated to make sure recurrence is not occurring. It's again critical to know that recovery is slow and may take up to six to 12 weeks minimum and much longer after that. And supportive rehabilitation can be a key factor in short-term and long-term recovery. So overall, an aneurysm rupture is devastating. It's really placing the patient in a very difficult situation. But we have good treatments and with adequate therapy, patience, and a multidisciplinary group of uh, physicians in your care, excellent uh, recovery and return to nearly normal function can be possible. Please note, there is gonna be some chronic symptoms that unfortunately you have to deal with headaches, some memory difficulties. But again, it's all about how you can find strategies to deal with these problems. And um, finally, I'm happy to be involved as a, a second opinion for the care of your aneurysm anytime. So please feel free to reach out if needed. Thank you.